First time Flynn Dawson's been late for lunch since that young wife of his had a baby. Joe Wilson, the head bookkeeper, told me this morning that there's a lawyer down here from New York to put this mill into a steel combine. It'll make Flint a millionaire, Joe says. A millionaire? Can you keep yeah. that? Flint ain't interested in nothing but his wife and that baby and this beer. A million is a lot of money. This combine will be a hundred million dollar corporation. And we hope Mr. Dawson will accept the office of general manager. Personally, I'll be guided by what Mr. Dawson thinks should be done. You've been rather quiet, Flint. What do you think of this merger? Well, as I listened to Enright, I kept thinking, the whistle has blown for lunch. Uh, get this done in the minutes, Joe. If this merger goes through, the bankers and promoters whom Enright represents will pocket between 15 and 20 million dollars. Gentlemen, my clients will not pocket them. Just a moment, Enright. I'm particularly interested in the large block of stock which is being bought on the 20-year plan by the employees of this mill. All stock will be traded in for stock in the new corporation. Yes, and when the water is squeezed out of the stock of this new corporation, it will shrink like a bag of cottage cheese. Well, I'm late for lunch, gentlemen. I move we adjourn. Thank you, Mr. Wilson, have several copies of the minutes made for Mr. Enright. Yes, Mr. Marley. Well, I told you what Dawson would do. Yes, but you didn't tell me that you were going to flop over to his side. I agree with Flint absolutely. Hmm? On the record. Oh. Uh, I wanted to appear in the minutes that way. I have a check for the amount I mentioned two weeks ago. But remember, before I close this deal, I want the rest of the money and a written agreement as to the stock. All right. You'll hear from me shortly. Yeah, that's what I want. Yes. What got this away, Flynn? Uh, had one of these up in the director's room. <laughs> Hard boiled. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you swallowed him whole. <laughs> Bad egg. <laughs> Vivian, well, this is Jim. Did you talk to Flint? Yes, I, I told him I couldn't stay here any longer. This gloomy house and those terrible mills and the city with Jim, I'll go mad. It's Flint's chance to make a fortune. You can have everything. Live where you like, travel. Steel is in his blood. Flint is steel. But I'm not. Talk to him again this afternoon. Put it to him squarely. It's all so hopeless, Jim. But drop in tonight and we'll talk things over. All right. Goodbye. Have Joe Swan report to my office at once. Who did you want? Yes, Swanson, one of the crane men on the night shift. Yeah, he offered you a million to sell out. You ought to have taken it. No, I have plans of my own. The time you boys are finished paying for the stock you're buying, is it going to be the biggest steel mill in the country? In the meantime, these dinner bales are going to remain full. Uh, come on, boys. Time to get back to work. But you were drunk again last night. Who said I was drunk? Then? I had a drink, but I wasn't drunk. I handled the crane all right, didn't I? Yes, but supposing you were to pull the wrong lever, you might drop a ladle of metal onto some man walking on the floor below. Flint himself is on the floor a lot of the time. Maybe he'd give me another chance. Hmm. Flint? And he's against a man as that man's finish. I'm running that crane tonight, ain't I? And it's your last night.
God, his leg. Contract should have come in for six forty-eight ton girders. Yes, it came to the office yesterday. Oh, good. Uh, these uh, government contracts, Jim, give them precedence over everything. I use the finest steel. It may mean the lives of men. Yes, John, I understand. I must get back to the middle. The quickest way for you to get well is to stop thinking about these things. Yes, it's a good advice, but hard to follow. <laughs> you can rely upon the men at the mill. You yourself trained them. And Vivian, she's proving quite a businesswoman. Well, you and you and Joe Wilson take care of her. She's more capable than you think. I've had power of attorney drawn up so that she can sign papers that require your signature. Oh, oh. It would be excellent training for her. Good, yes. Oh, it will help to distract her mind and give her a deeper interest in my affairs. Mr. Morris, this won't do at all. The hospital isn't the place for iron and steel any more than the steel mill is the place for rest and quiet. You're quite right, Doctor. I'm sorry. I'll not be responsible for his condition if this keeps up. Take his temperature, please. Bye, John. Well, then. Oh, Doctor. I suggest you give orders that he's to attend to no business whatsoever and sees no one, with the possible exception of Mrs. Dawson. Yes, yes. When will I be out of here? If you obey orders and forget all business worries, we'll have you back in your own home before the new year. So you're beginning to face facts. Flint thinks more of his mill than he does of you. I'd like to take you away from here. You don't know what you're saying, Jim. But I love you. If he doesn't love you enough to take you away, then... Will you come with me? To go away with you? No. No, it's impossible, Jim. We're the only reason, Jim. But there's another. It's all so hopeless. But I love you. Please. I... Dawson has called to take me home. I'm sure she'll be here a little later. But 
Remember, another month in bed after you go home. The doctor's orders. Oh, I suppose so. I suppose so. You do. Hmm. Oh, uh, Mr. Enright has gotten permission from the doctor to see you. Huh? Enright? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, show him in, please, nurse. 